Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Menace Forum Venus Series UM580 Mini PC. We have taken a look at the UM560 on the channel. When it comes down to it, these have turned out to be really nice little mini PCs. And one of the big things this has going for it is alt mode over USB type C. So basically we can do power in from the USB type C port on the rear and video out. And I personally refer to this as single cable operation mode. If you have a display that supports USB type C video input and PD quick charging out, all you'll need is a single cable to get this connected. So inside of the box, along with the UM580, we're also going to receive a mounting bracket system. This does support a 2.5 inch drive, so we've got our cabling there. They've also included a couple extra rubber feet, a 100 watt PD quick charger, and a stand for the UM580. And personally, I like standing this up in the vertical orientation, but you can always leave it on the desk just like this if you want to. When it comes to I.O., up front here we've got one 3.5mm audio jack, and we've also got two USB Type-C ports, and as you can see they are labeled here. They're both USB Type-C 3.2, but only one of these will support video out, and as you can see it's the one to the far right. But not to worry, because all of the good I.O. is around the back here. We've got two full-size HDMI ports, and these will support 4K 60 out. We also have two USB 2.0 ports and two USB 3.2 ports, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and our final USB Type-C port around the rear here, which does support alt mode or single cable operation mode. Now I do want to mention that the UM580 comes included with a 100 watt PD quick charger. It does take a lot more power than the UM560 because this is actually using an H variant APU. It's the Ryzen 5800H. And from my testing so far, I would recommend at least a 65 watt input from your display. So if your display is capable of alt mode, make sure it does put out at least 65 watts. A lot of the older monitors with alt mode only did up to around 35 which is perfectly fine for the UM560, but since we have that 5800H here, this will be pulling a little more power and it's definitely gonna put out better performance. So I've mentioned that the UM580 is powered by the Ryzen 7 5800H, and with this we get eight cores, 16 threads, and a max clock up to 4.4 gigahertz. And with this, we get the Radeon 8 iGPU at 2000 megahertz. This will support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, and this unit here has 16. When it comes to storage, we've got one M.2 SSD slot, and we can also add a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom of the unit. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this runs Windows 11 out of the box, but there's nothing stopping you from installing Linux. After all, it is an AMD based system, and Linux would perform absolutely amazing on this unit. Over on the Menace Forum website, you can pick this up in three different variants. You can go bare bones with it with no storage or RAM. You can opt for 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, or you can move up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, but it's still going to keep that 512 gigabyte SSD. Luckily, we do have space for that 2.5 inch drive in here. It's going to mount right here to the bottom panel, and it's actually really easy to get in here and upgrade the RAM and storage if you ever needed to. It's just four screws on the bottom. It's running dual channel RAM here, SODIMM RAM up to 3200 megahertz, and we've got that M.2 SSD. This one did come included with a 512 drive and a heatsink pre-installed. Real quick, I want to give you a demo of that alt mode. What I've got here is a BenQ 4K monitor. It does support alt mode over USB Type-C, and it will do up to 65 watts quick charging or PD charging. All I need is the single USB Type-C cable plugged in. We can power the unit up. It's going to send power to the PC and display back over that USB Type-C cable. Makes it really awesome for traveling, and especially if you're using a portable monitor. Alright, so I've had a little time to mess around with this, and what I've found so far is the APU is actually running at 35 watts right out of the box. You can always use a third-party application to up that TDP if you want to. I would go with something like APU Tuning Utility. But so far, so good. Everything's been working out really well. I've got some benchmarks installed, I've got some games and emulators that we're going to be testing in this video. But you know, picking something like this up as your everyday PC or as a secondary PC is going to work out perfectly fine. That 5800H has more than enough power for everyday tasks. In fact, even if you just wanted to go with that UM560, you'd definitely be good to go. Web browsing, email checking, document editing, 4K video playback, you want to do some 1080p video editing or even photo editing on this machine? 
you're going to have a really good time with it. With those 8 cores and 16 threads and that boost up to 4.4 gigahertz, this thing definitely puts the power down. And given that we are running at 35 watts, it can keep that performance across the CPU and the GPU at the same time. So the first thing I wanted to show off here was a little bit of 4K 60fps video playback from YouTube. I've got Stats for Nerds up in the top left hand corner, and on the initial load in we did have 7 drop frames, but by the end of this video we only had 9 drop frames in total, and I really do think that comes down to the network I'm on right now. This does have Wi-Fi 6 built in, or you could go with that 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. And personally, I like keeping it wired as much as possible. Next thing I wanted to do was jump right into some PC gaming. And first up, Forza Horizon 5, 1080p low. Now on these Ryzen chips, I've always had really good luck with this game here, especially at those low settings. But some of the lower end chips can only handle this with these same settings here at around 720, sometimes 900p, depending on the chip you're using. But with this, we're at 1080 and it's running great. We actually got an average of 71 FPS out of this game. Not bad at all, and it still looks great at low settings given that we're at 1080p. Next thing I did was run a couple benchmarks, and keep in mind we're at that stock TDP, 35 watts on all of this. And the first one here is Geekbench 5, single core, 1423, multi, 7025. Now if I was to run this at 45 watts, we could definitely up that single and multi, but I think it's got a good balance here of performance and thermals with the cooling system they have in this unit. Next on the list, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid with a total score of 15,955. Fire Strike coming in with a 3,500. And finally, Time Spy with a 1,437. So obviously, these scores aren't going to match a high-end gaming machine, but given the form factor, I think it's doing a great job. So with the benchmarks out of the way, I want to get back into some more PC gaming and test a few games out, then we'll move over to some high-end emulation. Here we have Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low, with FSR set to performance. Uh, with this, we could go to 900p and kind of lock it at 30, but I was really hoping we could reach a steady 60 with it. But it's hard pressed to do that even at 720p, so playing this game at 30fps would be the way to go. Next one on the list here is Spider-Man Remastered, 720p, low, FSR set to performance. It's actually doing better than Cyberpunk. But again, not quite at 60. Another one of those games that would perform really well at 900p, low settings, locked at 30. Now this will reach 60 FPS indoors, but you know, with this game here, there is some areas where it would come in handy, but usually, at least for me when I'm playing this, I'm web swinging, so I wanted to test it in an outdoor opened area. Next one up is Doom Eternal, 720p, low, no resolution scale. Now I always mention resolution scale with this game because uh, using that dynamic FPS based resolution scale is definitely what you want to do with these Ryzen APUs. You can set that to 60 FPS and get a really nice smooth experience out of this game. Here's Elden Ring, a game that really gives these APUs a run for its money. So we're at 720p low, and we can get an average of around 43 FPS out of this one. Indoors, just like some of the other games, we can reach 60 with it at 720p low, but you're going to spend most of your time out here, so that's really the way to test. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, before we move over to emulation, we've got God of War, 720p low, FSR set to performance, 40 FPS on average was hoping for a little more out of this, and you can squeeze a bit more, but we just can't quite run this at 60. Even with FSR set to ultra performance, it's still right there at the edge. Alright, so now it's time to check out some emulation, and as a lot of us already know who are into emulation, these chips do a great job. The 5600U, the 5800U, and especially the 5800H. Here's Wii U using the SimU emulator, Vulcan back in, Bayonetta 2 at 60 FPS, and this will do Breath of the Wild, but I would go ahead and lock that at 30, 1080p. Moving over to PS3 using RPCS3. So with this one here, Skate 3, Vulcan back in, I did have to take it up by 5 watts. We went up to 40 watts using APU tuning utility. And it was really odd because it's only a 5 watt difference, but we were getting a ton of dips at 35 watts. This is one of those games that really does love those extra cores and threads, and we needed to send enough power to those and the GPU at the same time. 
so that extra wattage really helped out with this one. But playing games like Tekken 6 or Demon's Souls, it only needs to be set at that stock TDP, and it's not even going to pull that full 35 watts. But one of the most impressive things that I tested on this unit so far was Xbox 360 emulation using Xenia. In fact, I'm using the Canary build of Xenia. We've got Forza 2 here. And if you tried to emulate this in the past, you know how hard it can be to run, even on higher end chipsets. But with all of the new updates to Xenia, we're getting some great 360 emulation on these Ryzen APUs. And you could even do Red Dead 2, not at 60, but at 30 FPS. So when it comes to power consumption, this is plugged into a kilowatt meter, and keep in mind this is total system, the whole little mini PC, not just the CPU or the GPU. Idle, 12 watts from the wall. Average gaming, 52 watts. And in an extreme stress test, I was able to get this to pull 71 watts, which was quite a bit, but keep in mind that's an extreme test. You will never see these if you're just doing normal stuff, even gaming with this PC. CPU temps actually look pretty decent given the confined space this thing's in. Idle, 38 degrees Celsius. Average gaming across all of the games and emulators that I tested in this video, 79 degrees Celsius. And I was actually able to get this to hit thermal throttle in a 10 minute sentiment stress test. It was about six minutes into it that it hit 94 degrees Celsius. And you know, I kind of expected that because we're totally maxing this out at 35 watts for a prolonged period of time. But overall, it's a really nice little PC. I love the look of it. Having that alt mode or single cable operation mode really comes in handy. And you know, you really don't need this unless you have a monitor or display that really supports it. But it's great to have it built in and hopefully down the road, we'll see this on more of these mini PCs. But yeah, this could definitely be a desktop replacement or even a secondary PC for some people. And if you're interested in learning more, I will leave links to Minus Forum's website in the description. They've got the UM560 or the UM580, which we've taken a look at in this video. Three different variants, bare bones, 16 gigs or 32, it's really up to you. So if you're interested, definitely check those out. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this or the UM560, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.